Hello, hello, Alyssa J. Dillon here. Welcome back to our channel where we're talking with accountants, financial professionals, and CFOs about how to scale their accounting firms so they can get to the next level, so they can truly become the CEOs that their companies need, so they can build teams, get more clients, make more money, and work less in their company and start working on their companies. If that sounds like you, tune in because today I am gonna talk about something super exciting. Today my goal is to talk to you about why they have been lying to you. To tell you finally, you don't have to work hard, you don't have to work long hours, and that is not going to make accountants rich. And I know this is what you were taught, this is what you were you felt. You worked so hard, you wanted to put in all the time, you wanted to put in all the energy, you wanted to outwork everyone, you wanted to outlast everyone, because that's how you got the promotion, right? You were a good little worker bee. Well, that's not how this works anymore, not as a CEO, and that's not what we're gonna do in our company. We're gonna shift that paradigm today, and we're gonna talk about why they lied to you and what you're gonna do now. I'm gonna break down the three ways that you can start working less in your company and start making more money and what you really should start bragging about because I'm not walking around bragging about no one can outwork me, no one can work longer hours than me and you shouldn't feel that way either. And in fact, some of the wealthiest people in the world, that's not what they're saying either. They're not saying, oh my gosh, I wake up at four in the morning and I I work all day and I don't go to bed until 10 o'clock at night because I'm working so hard and I'm outworking you. That's not something to be bragging about. You know what I'm bragging about these days? I'm bragging about the fact that I'm making the money that I desire and I'm also spending time with my friends. I'm spending time with my family. I'm enjoying my children as they grow up. What I'm excited about is that I've built a culture. I've built a company that is growing, that is continuing to be built and scaling without me stepping into the day-to-day -day operations every single day, that I can take off a Monday and not be worried that my team is gonna need me to hold their hand to take the next steps. So number one, it's gonna come down to your pricing strategy. I wanna ask you right now, what does your pricing strategy, are you pricing hourly? Are you value-based pricing? A lot of us hear these terms thrown around, but we're not actually leaning into anything specific and we're not pricing based on profitability, when we hear value-based pricing, sometimes we're correlating that with the value that we think we're creating versus what we need to be creating in order to run a sustainable company. Now, I want you to think about a company that's running, they price their products based on revenue minus the expenses and then the profitability they need to earn. And that includes the CEO's wages, right? So you're the CEO. How much money do you want to make also? How much do you want to pull out of the each revenue that's created from each client. When you go to price a client, I don't want you to think about what you used to make at your old job. It doesn't come down to the fact that maybe you used to make $35 an hour, so charging somebody $40 an hour or $50 an hour is a steal for them, or even saying, oh, I'm gonna charge you $100 an hour um, because I need to cover the QuickBooks expense or this or that. I want you to think of what if you were just the CEO and you had a whole team who needed to also cover this. And maybe you don't have the team yet, but I want you to start thinking as if, right? If you wanna build the company of the future, you need to start thinking about your future. Who's gonna be doing that work down the line? Because it's gonna be a lot easier if you go in at these rates than to increase them in the future, right? So go in at the rates that you want, profitable rates so you can invest in yourself, so you can invest to grow, so you don't find yourself in a position where the first time you go to invest in an employee, you're scared to death because you don't know how you're gonna pay them. You should be profitable right off the bat. You should be able to bring somebody in very quickly to start supporting you on doing the work so you can focus on revenue generating activities. So 
When you're pricing, I want you to price for profit. Price as if you already had that team and that company built out and you're gonna find yourself in a much safer space. Number two, I want you to start leveraging leadership. This is something that is so hard. You wanna be the best, you wanna be the number one, you wanna be the A player, right? But here's the deal. Let's think about, I love soccer, so I'm gonna correlate this with soccer. I want you to think about what if you were coaching a soccer team? Are you gonna be the coach and also get out on the field and play the striker, the stopper? Are you gonna play the goalie? Are you gonna play midfield? Are you gonna play every single position? No, but you, what you're gonna be able to do is you're gonna identify who your strongest players are and you're gonna put them in the right spots on the field based on their skill sets, right? So if you have a player who has a really strong left foot, you'd wanna put them on the left side of the field, right? Because they're gonna kick with their left. That's your job is to identify your leadership and leverage your leadership so you can start having team members do the work for you and your job becomes elevated. I'm the CEO and I'm leveraging leadership to get this work done. And this becomes high leverage activity versus low leverage activities. Low leverage activities look like you sitting down for hours doing accounting and bookkeeping. Don't you think your time would be better spent leading a team that's doing all of this work than spending your time focused on reconciling bank accounts? right? You can't drive revenue when you're reconciling bank accounts. You can't build relationships, right? You're not getting out there doing the things you need to do. So focus on right now. I want you to really ask yourself, take a moment and say, in my company right now, am I focused on low leverage activities or high leverage activities? right? Maybe make a list for yourself. Am I doing low leverage activities or high leverage activities? What are high leverage activities for myself? And I'll tell you right now, some of the high leverage activities that I think you need to be doing right now in your company as an accounting firm owner, you need to be leading your team, you need to be developing relationships with new prospects, you need to be finding partnership relationships, you need to be networking within your niche or participating in the niche. You, you should be going to conferences, you should be trying to speak at different events, right? You should be getting on the podcast, you should be engaging in the Facebook groups. So many of these platforms are completely free, so you should be utilizing these strategies, right? Right? But you can't be doing that if your head is in QuickBooks, right? And so your job is to lead your leaders so they can be doing those things. But you have to find those leaders. I understand that. So I want you to think I'm not outworking you, but I'm leveraging leaders to get this work done. And I'm building a culture and a company that's outperforming every other company. So the people that you need to start thinking about, number one, a client success department. You need people to take care of your clients, right? That's your accounting team. They're doing the accounting work. They're doing the bookkeeping. They're doing the taxes. Number two, your marketing team. They're helping you with visibility. I spend about four hours a month creating these videos and then the rest of my team, they take this stuff. I can do a YouTube video on how we do this, how my videos are created and what my team does with them after that. If you guys are interested, let me know in the comments if you wanna hear more about marketing. But I spend about four hours a month on my marketing and then my team does everything else. They take this, they, they break it up, they split it up and they put it out to the separate channels and we're on YouTube, we're on Instagram, we're on TikTok, we're on Facebook, we have a Facebook group. Right? We can link all those channels below as well if you're interested in following us in any of those spaces. Finally, number three, how you position yourself strategically in your company. So this comes down to, are you focused on the right things within your niche? Are you focused on getting your clients the results they wanna get? Are you focused on being the go-to, the category king and queens of your market? So I talked a little bit before about focusing on participating in your niche. If you want to start charging higher ticket, it's your job to focus on specific people that you can get a specific result 
for. So your position in the market is so incredibly important to doing this. When you work with multiple different niches and people all over in your industry, what happens is you have to have different systems and processes for every different thing, right? And you're onboarding all kinds of different people. And so I'm gonna tell you right now, e-commerce looks a heck of a lot different from working with somebody in the medical industry, right? And working with a coffee shop is gonna look a lot different from working with a construction company. And if you're in the very beginning phases and you still don't know what your niche is, that's okay. But as you're growing and as you're scaling, I need you to start doing a process of elimination. Who do I never want to work with again? I worked with multiple different niches and then I started to realize I need to eliminate some of these niches that are not for me. So process of elimination, I ended up staying within holistic healthcare. And that was really my niche. I worked with dental practices, I worked with pediatricians and chiropractors. That ended up working really well for me, but I was able to charge high ticket because I could speak their language, I could really support them, I could help them, I could increase their profit margins, and I focused on results and I became the go-to for them specifically. I hope that these three rules that I gave you today were super helpful. I want you guys to realize that you can have it all. You don't have to work hard to get where you wanna go. I love you guys, I'll see you soon. Again, I want you to remember, subscribe to our channel, hit the bell so you can get all the notifications when we drop a new episode every single week and we will see you very soon. Thank you so much.